I'm Jan Chalewski. I'm uh, one of the founders of uh, CryptoSat. Um, we're a team that's uh, based uh, all over, um, headquartered in the US, California, and, uh, and New York. Um, and I'll be talking about uh, compute on data in space um, um, and tied to kind of what we're doing and um, um, also integrations with the Protocol Labs uh, specific projects. Um, it's a very, it's a short talk, so I'm gonna keep it very high level. Welcome to ask me questions at the end about uh, specific topics and dive into details, or just catch me after and uh, ask whatever you feel like. Um, cool, so in terms of the general mission of CryptoSat, we essentially build the trust infrastructure for Web3, that's how we like to call it, um, in space. And we do it by launching, actually building, integrating, and launching satellites um, into lower Earth orbits. Um, for uh, Web3 use cases, cryptographic protocols, and confidential computing. And the confidential computing, uh, computing aspect is uh, what I'm gonna focus on in this talk. Um, so um, here you see the launches of our first two satellites. One of them was launched in uh, May 2022, and the other one was launched in uh, um, just earlier this year in uh, January. In terms of some of the milestones, uh, we did a couple of experiments aboard the International Space Station to test uh, different aspects of operations uh, with the assets in space, um, launched our two satellites. Um, and uh, one thing I wanted to mention is the recent participation in the, the KZG ceremony, if you were following that, that's related to Ethereum scaling. Um, so it's essentially the centralized ceremony that requires um, parties to produce public parameters that can be trusted later on to be produced with um, uh, kind of computational integrity in a certain way. Um, otherwise, the scheme can be compromised. So this is something we contributed to from uh, our second satellite in space. Um, and we're working on launching more, basically working towards the constellation. Um, in terms of the very high level architecture, so you can see here a uh, mechanical design, uh, you can see that it's basically this little thing with uh, multiple boards, including uh, uh, an onboard computer, including computers that serve for the cryptographic operations uh, that we're doing. Um, and in addition to the satellites themselves uh, that we're launching, we also uh, connect to a ground station infrastructure and provide convenient APIs for users um, to be able to directly issue requests to those satellites. Um, and that's not very common actually in the space. Usually it involves a lot of coordination and operation and our vision is to get to a very simple RESTful API um, plus integrations with uh, direct integrations with smart contracts that we're actually already doing uh, that would enable users to request certain operations and have them completed in space. Um, here, that's a, script, a screenshot from uh, um, our uh, tracking uh, website. So that shows uh, two of the satellites we have. So you can see the different locations earlier this morning uh, when I was updating the slide. Um, and another thing we built uh, that's kind of nice for developers is uh, mostly for onboarding and um, explaining the different use cases that we're addressing is what we call the CryptoSat simulator. So you can go online to simulator.cryptosat.io um, and uh, it's basically kind of an interactive tutorial uh, plus satellite tracker and uh, a playground in JavaScript where you can try different APIs um, and it basically exemplifies uh, what you can do with such a satellite, different use cases, um, that it can uh, uh, serve uh, and so on. So basically a developer onboarding tool. Um, I want to give uh, one real world example of a use case that we're serving already. Um, I have uh, customers, uh, some customers uh, for. Um, so one of the use cases is essentially trusted setups for cryptographic schemes. Um, some cryptographic schemes require public parameters, just some numbers that need to be produced um, in a certain way. Um, in, and if it's, it's not being done correctly or it's being done maliciously, it can potentially compromise the entire protocol. Um, one example of that, which you're well familiar with, is ZK Snarks. So some schemes require a trusted setup. Um, another example, polynomial commitments, which is also part of ZK Snarks, but can also be used for other things like the KZG, uh, what, what, what KZG is used for in Ethereum. Um, so those are two examples of uh, um, setups, uh, cryptographic setups uh, that need to be produced uh, with, uh, uh, in a certain correct way. Um, so here we're basically providing kind of a trusted execution environment 
physically, completely physically isolated, and that's the important point uh, uh, that we're trying to emphasize about our solution, is uh, the lack of any physical access and the ability to compromise anything in memory, use any side channels, and so on. Uh, basically, a trusted execution environment that can do those things for you. Um, and uh, two examples of that was the participation in the KZG ceremony that I mentioned, and another one is uh, uh, producing a trusted setup for a ZK Snark scheme that's used by um, the Dora Hacks DAO uh, that serves for uh, community project funding. Um, and now I want to get to the centralized cloud compute and tie together. Um, so um, it's a growing, uh, uh, it's essentially a growing marketing market, um, uh, kind of emerging uh, for the past uh, couple of years, and there are different examples of that. So uh, within Protocol Labs, uh, Bakayao project is one example. Um, there are also additional projects like Super Protocol. Akash is more of a marketplace, and just today I met uh, Sami here and talked to him and learned about Taobyte, uh, which is a serverless uh, decentralized uh, compute. I hope I'm presenting it correctly. Um, so those are just some examples uh, of that, uh, focused on different uh, aspects of uh, decentralized computation. Um, and one thing that can be very relevant to this uh, domain, um, potentially not applicable to each and every use case, but uh, is often uh, um, important, is uh, providing confidentiality and integrity uh, for uh, various sensitive workloads. So often users of the centralized clouds would like to process sensitive data potentially um, and uh, ensure that an attacker, a very powerful attacker that has complete access to uh, the infrastructure cannot compromise uh, or leak their data and infer anything useful from it. Uh, on the left, I put this example of uh, genomic data that can be very sensitive, um, but you can think of uh, other examples of financial data, um, et cetera. Um, the other aspect uh, can be getting an assurance of computation integrity, basically getting an assurance that the computation is done correctly and uh, the, um, the cloud is not taking any shortcuts in terms of uh, not producing the right result and not putting the compute, uh, computational effort needed to, uh, do, pr to produce uh, what you needed to produce, or is not doing something maliciously. So, uh, here I put those hands with beads, uh, basically referring to uh, uh, something like an auction. So for instance, think of a, a sealed bid auction where you need to reveal the winning uh, bid um, and nobody knows the actual bids. They're sealed, they're encrypted. Uh, so you need to trust this party that's commencing the auction to do it correctly and produce the right result, right? So for that, you need kind of like a trusted execution environment or you need some cryptographic means to achieve that. Um, I'll, I'll mention the cryptographic uh, solutions first, but then we'll proceed to the other alternative, which is trusted execution environments. So in terms of confidentiality, uh, something like homomorphic and fully homomorphic encryption potentially can be ways to achieve uh, uh, this goal of working on data that's protected, encrypted, uh, even when you're actually processing it. Um, and for integrity, we have SNARKs and ZK SNARKs that also preserve uh, the privacy of the input. Um, there are different nuances here in terms of what you can achieve with those, uh, their practicality, uh, a lot of uh, obviously uh, constraints around performance. Uh, so I'm not going to go into all of that, uh, but happy to kind of discuss that uh, after uh, if anybody is interested. Um, and I'll mostly focus, I'm mostly focusing on the alternative um, of uh, trusted execution environments for achieving both confidentiality and integrity. Um, so, jump into compute and data in space, and I'll make it very short. I don't have time to dive into all the details, but essentially, uh, providing this kind of trusted execution environment, we can apply it to the centralized cloud in, clouds in the following way. Uh, for instance, taking Bakayao uh, as an example, uh, we have this architecture uh, that in, we have this uh, diagram that in natural describes the Bakayao architecture. Uh, it has compute nodes that can get bid on uh, workloads on processing uh, um, uh, different requests from users, um, and they can run it on different types of executors, and there are verifiers that are verifying the results. Um, often uh, they will, they'll verify that, the consensus, uh, that there's a consensus between different compute nodes or executors that uh, uh, processed uh, did a certain computation. And basically in our case, what we're proposing, what we're looking into actively um, uh, right now is the option of uh, um, having this kind of an executor in space, basically uh, having one of our satellites or a uh, constellation uh, provide those executors in space uh, and having ground compute 
kind of gateways uh, that would be able to build on sensitive workloads. Um, potentially to the extent that the user can be very specific about it and adding this kind of a flag uh, that we called uh, run in space indicate that they want a workload to run in this kind of a physically isolated environment. Um, and in this case, it will basically will go to a satellite, the compute will be done there, um, and uh, the results will be returned to the user with, it, with the attestation that it all happened on an authentic CryptoSat satellite. Um, taking another example of a super protocols architecture, so that's their architecture uh, slide. And uh, basically the idea here, and they have this notion of a TE provider. So the idea here is that we provide it uh, via one of our satellites and that becomes the trusted execution environment plugged into the rest of their infrastructure that can process uh, um, and data. Um, so just wanted to mention those two examples and uh, show how it applies to different architectures. Um, an important aspect of all of that is attestation. So attestation uh, in this space of trusted execution environments is this concept of uh, uh, proving that um, you're basically running whatever you want to run in an actual trusted execution environment and not somewhere else. Uh, because that's crucial to kind of this whole uh, concept. If uh, somebody just tells you, oh, it's okay, it's running in SGX or it's running on a satellite or wherever, um, you cannot uh, trust it. You wouldn't be willing to uh, deposit any sensitive data unless you get some cryptographic assurance. And that's usually done with attestation. So first of all, proving that the user is sending some data to a space-based node in our case, um, and also attesting to the authenticity of any produced results. Um, and the way to achieve it is um, the following. Uh, we basically have this key generation ceremony uh, that starts after the launch of each of our satellites where we generate a keeper or a couple of keepers uh, uh, after the launch. So the private keys never leave the satellite. Uh, and we start broadcasting the public key for a certain time such that multiple participants, multiple uh, ground stations can receive it and gossip between them and see that they agree uh, that they're getting the same public key. Um, and there's also, so there's a signing uh, and verification keeper produced and also an encryption keeper. Uh, and the public encryption key can enable you to encrypt some data that will only be accessible later on by uh, the satellite uh, and also every result that's going to be produced by our uh, uh, satellite is going to be digitally signed so you can verify that it came from CryptoSat using the, the corresponding public key. Just one thing I'm asking for uh, a small help with. So we launched this tweet from space campaign. Um, tweeted us at CryptoSatBot on Twitter and we'll get your tweets uh, signed in space by one of our uh, satellites. So that's a small PR campaign we're launching. Help us with that. Uh, and yeah, with that I'll uh, conclude the talk and happy to talk to you after. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jan. Thanks.